So I thought it would be a good idea to do just a quick session on showing people what that looks like to kind of take some of the stigma about it being scary kind of away. So as you just heard, the webinar is being recorded, uh, just like our previous webinars. We found out today that there has been some technical issues with uploading the webinars. So this webinar should be loaded to training.blueyonder.com's homepage in the next two weeks or so, along with uh, open access, I'm sorry, not open access, um, a storm optimization from last week. That has not been posted yet. But the webinars for space planning, floor planning, and planogram generator should be there. So please check out training.blueyonder.com to look for those recordings. So you can go back and watch them whenever you, know, you feel like listening to information about these topics. So our agenda today matches the agenda for the other webinars that you've joined. So again, just kind of quickly introducing the category management trainers that you heard rattling on earlier, um, giving you our contact information so that you can contact us with any questions that you might have on this subject or any other subjects in the category management suite. And then a list of our upcoming public classes as well, just so you can get some additional um, training support. Then we'll move into the main reason you guys are here. So an overview of open access reporting and what that looks like. We'll take a look at some sample reports that already exist, and then we'll create and save a very simple report. Once we do that, we'll have a quick Q&A, and then we do have a webinar poll just to kind of get some feedback from you guys about this topic and about our webinar series. You guys have all come on uh, to the webinar on mute, so if you do have questions as we go, please use the Q&A and chat functions within the Zoom webinar. You've heard Robin and Mark chatting. They are manning those. So they will be able to answer your questions in real time or they can stop me as I go to ask questions. Or you can also wait and ask questions at the very end when we do our Q&A session. So it's up to you guys. So again, just kind of quick Trainer introductions, my name is Kenny Miller. Uh, I am one of JDA's category management trainers along with Robin Zandanowitz uh, and Mark Hedges. Uh, Robin and I do lead up the training for Catman within uh, the Americas. And then Mark is over uh, in the UK leading up Catman within the EMEA region. Like I said earlier, we already had several webinar sessions. So I did webinar session two weeks ago on planogram generator using pegboards and sign actions. Uh, Robin did one on floor planning tips, tricks, and efficiency and creating assortment sort of optimization projects from start to finish. And Mark did space planning tips, tricks, and efficiencies as well. So feel free to go back to Blue Yonder training or training.blueyonder.com for those videos. Um, like I said, if you want to contact us for any reason, here is our contact information. Um, you can always go to training.blueyonder.com to check out our training schedule and to look at information about education services and education services offerings. You can also email our um, support team for training at training at blueyonder.com or feel free to uh, email us directly. So you can see our contact information is here. Please feel free to email us with any questions that you might have. I'll show this screen again at the end of the webinar, but please feel free to write this contact information down and contact us if you need anything. Upcoming classes that we have um, for North America and Latin America, you can see a list of our space planning um, level one public classes. Right now, these are all being done virtually. Uh, as well as our space planning level two uh, classes for North America, Latin America, and then there is an EMEA class in there as well. If you want to sign up for these classes or have any questions about them, you can always go to, again, um, training at blueyonder.com, or you can, again, email us and we'll, have, we'll be happy to, to pass that information on to the correct people. We have added in some additional trainings in North America and Latin America as well. We have a public floor planning class schedule now, in addition to a public, public assortment optimization class and a public planogram generator class as well. So again, feel free to go to um, blueyondertraining.com to sign up for those classes if interested. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna go ahead and do a live demo here. So hopefully everything goes according to plan. 
So what I'm doing in this example is I'm already logged into Open Access. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Open Access and just kind of want an idea of, of what we're looking at, Open Access really is the web interface equivalent of Data Manager. So a lot of what you're able to do in Data Manager, you're able to do here as well. There are some changes or some exceptions because of moving to this new interface. And one of those big exceptions or changes really deals with the reporting aspect, which is why we're all here today. When it comes to reporting in Data Manager, again, for those of you who are comfortable with it and familiar with it, you're kind of accessing the database information directly through that interface into the data that is stored within the database itself. When it comes to reporting in Open Access, there's actually what I consider kind of an extra layer. The extra layer that we're using within Open Access is JDA reporting. I'm assuming that's gonna change its name to Blue Yonder reporting, but it's JDA reporting right now. JDA reporting, what it's doing is it is wrapping IBM's Cognos interface and install with JDA content and graphic skins. We then create custom connectors to our products that connect into Cognos. So if you do not have JDA reporting, you're not gonna be able to do any reporting through open access. You would still potentially be doing reporting through data manager itself. Those custom connectors then that we've built will interface with open access's user login so that you're really only logging into open access and Cognos at one time. So again, in this example, we have JDA reporting already installed. JDA reporting is that connector within IBM's Cognos. Kenny, we've just yes. got a quick question from Tony, um, just so you can answer it live, because um, you know other people might have the same question. Um, Tony said, um, none of this can be done in a flat file environment. Is that correct? You need to be an IKB, CKB database. Correct. So this is accessing the CKB database the way that data manager would access the CKB database as well. It's essentially replacing one tool for the other. Eventually, and I don't know timing or specifics on this, data manager will be sunset at some point in favor of open access. But you're absolutely right. If you do not have the, if you do not have the database, then this reporting functionality is probably nice to know, but it won't be very, very useful for you. Perfect. Thank you, Kenny. They said thank you. Absolutely. All right. So one of the things that is also kind of useful within this environment is just like within Data Manager, there are sample reports that are already built. So again, if you have installed JDA reporting, you will be able to access those sample reports. You will also be able to access linked reports the same way that you can access linked reports in Data Manager as well. Within Open Access, if I go to, let's say, our CKB dropdown, we have the same object hierarchy that we again do in Data Manager. So if you know, again, Data Manager, all of your uh, forms within your framework, this home screen right here under CKB mimics that. So in this example, I can go to my planogram options. And again, this is going to take me, since I'm right now in a virtual environment hooked up to Wi-Fi, it's going to take a second. But this will pull up the same planogram hierarchy so that you can open planograms in space planning. You can look at the planogram data. You can edit the planogram data. And then you can also use a lot of the linked reporting, such as looking at which products are on this planogram and then which uh, products this floor plan might be in. So the same type of reporting structure that always existed. So right here, we can see our planogram hierarchy and we'll go to our good old sample coffee makers. Where are you at? Coffee makers. And now I can see again in my planogram list, eventually. Here are the planograms within that node. And over here, I have the icons right here for opening a report. So in this example, I can say, you know what, I'd really like to know what products are on the 16 foot coffee makers planogram. If I click on this pop out right here, it opens its own window. 
And now I'll be able to see, hey, here's a list of all items that are on this particular planogram. As soon as we do that, it kicks over and accesses Cognos. So this report that we're about to see as soon as it runs right here, this is JDA reporting. This is Cognos reporting. So it moves away from being a, a JDA or Blue Yonder specific interface really into IBM's Cognos interface. But again, those same exact reports exist. Now what is slightly different, and this is where I think it's gonna be really kind of fun, is to create our own reports. So in order to do that here, what we're able to do is we're able to click on our reporting option. So we can click on reports right here. And again, this will eventually pop up. And like I said, we do have a bunch of sample reports, just like we do within Data Manager. So if I look at, let's say, these linked reports right here, these options right here exist the same way they do in Data Manager. So I can do one of two things here. I can use this pop out right here to open the report or run the report, but you can also come here as well and edit a report. So this pencil icon makes it very edit, very easy to edit. So in this particular example, let's see if I can get um, products on Planogram to run. So I'll go ahead and click on the open here. And one of the things that you're probably gonna notice is there is no pre-filter function here. The concept of a pre-filter goes away because being able to access data through Cognos is a lot more efficient than it is within Data Manager. So we don't need that pre-filter piece of it to limit our data. We could still run the report and it might be a little slow, but it is still a lot faster than it would be within Data Manager. However, what we now have instead that can be used, and I'm gonna show you how to do this, is the idea of a prompt page because chances are I want to look at products on a planogram, but I don't necessarily want to see every planogram in my database. That would still be a lot. So instead of doing a pre-filter, I can do a prompt. This prompt just happens to be a text prompt. So it wants me to fill in DB key information for the planogram. So I'll just use DB key one because I know that exists. And then I'll click okay. And now here are all items on planogram with DB key one. So again, it's taking concepts that might be familiar to us using a pre-filter, but now we're using a prompt instead. And it gives us the concept of a report, but this is a Cognos report versus a data manager report. Okay, so we can easily see that. All right, what we can also do is we can also, like in Data Manager, create our own reports. So to do that, all I'm gonna do is click on Create Report right here. And again, this will open up Cognos so that we can build the report using their interface. Now something that I think is really kind of interesting is within Cognos, you have the ability to create different templates. What I always think of templates though as being here is a template is more a usable area that we have. Because really Cognos uses the word report more broadly than we did in Data Manager. When we said report in Data Manager, we really were referring to a table. When we would say report in open access, a report really is a container for your data. Because a report can have a table, it can have a chart, it can have a list. So one template, let's say in this example where I've got four different areas, you could have four different types of data analytics in each of those columns. So it works more as like a grouping. What I find myself right now tending to favor is the idea of just a one column template. So that's what I'm gonna use in this particular example. Now something that's also 
I think interesting when it comes to Cognos is that you also have different themes. So if you want to apply a theme to your table or your reporting structure ahead of time, do it. I think it's a really great time saver. So in this example, I'll just do blue. Now when I click OK, I have this new report right here. Now the reason I like doing the one column is because now it gives me this really easy double click to edit text area that I would have had to have created otherwise. So in this example, what I think we're gonna do is if I just double click on this, I'm gonna name this table space to sales planograms. So hey, Kenny, essentially, yes, I'm sorry, um, are, are they able to use wildcard? Wild cards in their prompts? Ooh. That was a question somebody had, and that was great. I wasn't sure if we could That do is that. a great question. You know what? I am not 100% certain, so I will try it, and I will let you know. Because um, off the top of my head, I'm, I'm not sure. That's actually a good question. I want to say yes, but I'll, I'll test it out. Yeah, we're going to create – yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, you know what? You're right. We're going to create a prompt. We're going to create one anyway, right? Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll test it that. out. Yep, perfect. All right. So like I said, I can double click on this header and we'll just call this, actually I'm gonna change my name, performance across uh, type, planograms. Still not right, still not right, okay. And click okay. Now again, when you're building tables in data manager, that double click functionality to change text does not exist. So I think this is again, kind of a great time saver, and this is within the Cognos structure. So what we now need to do is within the report, we've got this plus icon right here in the middle so that we can add in our data element. And these again are different data elements that we can start bringing information into. So we can create cross tab, which in my mind works very similarly to like a pivot table. We can also create a list. So if you just want a list of items, if we want to create a table, the table is very similar to a list. It just has a little bit of different functionality and a different structure to it. We can also create blocks, which are great for spacers. I'll show you how to do that coming up as well. And then we can also insert text elements where maybe you only want to put in text for like a description of the table or something like that. Lastly, we have what's called a visualization. And visualization really means chart. So if you want to add in a graphic here, a chart to the data as well, you could create a chart here. For this example, like I said, we're going to keep it simple. So I'm going to do a cross tab. Now when you do that, what it's going to do is you're essentially creating object and query information. Now you can name this object query if you like, but what I've seen a lot of people do is just use the defaults. So in this example, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm not gonna change the name of it. So I'll just go ahead and click okay. And now you can see that it's starting to give me a template for the cross tab that we're trying to create. Now what we need to do in this example as well is we actually need to bring in data. Well, the way that we're gonna bring in data is remember we've got some of those kind of skins and um, content that we've created to work hand in hand with Cognos. So we need to access that. The way that we're gonna do that is over here, we have this source item, and we're gonna cl click plus to add report data. Now we, because we are interfacing with Cognos, when you install JDA reporting, we have this CKB package. This CKB package is what's allowing us to see data that's specific to our tools, specific to our data. So I'm gonna go ahead and load the CKB package. When I click open, you'll now see the CKB package, the CKB model, and when I expand the model, check it out. These are our objects. So now we can start bringing in data from each of these objects. Now in this particular example, what I'm gonna do is because I wanna do performance across planograms, I'm gonna to wanna to bring in across the top my planogram name. So I know who this data belongs to. In my mind, this is more important than ever to know the objects and where the data is coming from. So in this example, I know I'm using a very simple idea, 
but I want to bring in planogram name. Planogram name belongs to the planogram object. So I can expand the planogram folder. Now, what this has done is it has exposed all of the Intactics tables that are in the back end of our database that we never see. So as a front end user, I'm not aware that all of these different tables exist. I just know that I want to grab object data. So now it kind of does add in an extra element because we need to know what table the data belongs to. Now in this example, again, trying to keep it simple, I want to bring in planogram name. So you know what? Even myself, I'm not 100% versed in all of this backend data because I don't need it. But if I look at these different table names, I can start to, to guess what the data belongs to. So we've got the Intactics performance table, segment, drawing, planogram status, planogram. So if I'm guessing planogram is what I want to use, I can expand this table data. And now here are all of the fields in that table. So right here, I can see that I am in the planogram table using name. So that is planogram name. So all I need to do is just drag this up here. Boop, let go, check it out. Now I've got my planogram name information. Now, what I also want to see by planogram though, is I also want to see the UPCs for the products that are on those planograms. You know what? I'd also like to see the name of the product. Yeah, I might even like to see the brand of that product. So we can start bringing all of that information into this rows area. The problem is brand, UPC, name, those don't belong to planogram. That's not the object. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse this. Boop. And then I'm going to go ahead and collapse planogram again because it doesn't belong to planogram. What it belongs to is product. So I can expand the product folder and here are the exposed product tables. So in this example, you know what? I'll expand the Intactics products table and here are all of my product fields. UPC is right there. So I can easily just drag UPC over into this rows column. Boop. And now I've got UPC. Like I said, I may also want to bring name over. But you know what? If I just bring name over here and drop it, it's kind of putting it here on the left side. One of the great things about this interface, I think as well, that we've all complained about within data manager and space planning is there's no undo. Well, now we have it. So I can undo, boop, get rid of name. And instead, if I drag this over to the right side, check it out. Do you guys see that blinking line to the right of UPC? When I drop this, now I'm dropping it to the right of that column. I said I also want to bring in brand. So for some reason, I'm not 100% certain why, brand is towards the bottom. So I'll just scroll down here, find brand, and then drag it over here. And now do you guys see that blinking line to the right of name? If I let go, boop, now I've got my brands. Now, just before I get questions on this, I cannot type into the cell. So if I am clicking in this area right here and I want to go to the brands, I'm clicking B on my keyboard and it will not do it. Again, that is uh, Cognos functionality. I'm not 100% certain why you can't. Just be aware that you can't. All right. So now looking at this particular table, the structure is shaping up. Now we are still in our edit mode, but you know what? I want to see what this table is starting to look like. Now, in my example, I only have few planograms and a few data. So this is going to take a second to load. But if you have a lot of data, it might take a little bit longer. But what I can do is in order to see the data, if I come over here into this header area, I've got right now I'm in edit mode. If I click back on this pencil, boop, now it's going to run the table for me. So it's just going to give me a second and then it'll pop up and we'll be able to see right now all the planograms that are in our database. And we'll be able to see all the items, all the names, all the brands. So it is really all encompassing of what is in our database. Now we already said that the idea of a pre-filter doesn't exist, but what I'm going to be able to do is throw in a prompt here so that we can prompt 
only for certain planograms, maybe only within a certain node, so that we're not querying everything within our database. Here we go. So here are all the items. Here are the product name. Here is the brand. And then here are all my planograms across the top. If I drag all the way to the right, like I said, it's everybody. So it's a lot of data. Now, one of the things that's also different about um, Cognos reporting than data manager reporting is this is no longer one long page. So if I keep scrolling down to the bottom, I'm not seeing everybody. I'm not seeing every product because we also have to click on this page down option. So it's now creating a paged report, ver excuse me, versus one long page, which is what we're used to seeing. Now, what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna go back and edit this guy. So to edit, all I'm gonna do is click on my pencil again. Boop, and now I'm right back into edit mode. So now, what I wanna do in this example, is I wanna bring over the actual measures that we wanna look at. So what I wanna know right now is I wanna know what are the facings for those items on each of those planograms? What are the sales and what is the unit movement? So I wanna bring over those three columns into this data. Well, again, it goes back to object level. I know that I wanna use planogram specific sales. I wanna use planogram specific facings. I wanna use planogram specific unit movement that planogram specific element is performance. Because I'm building a planogram table though, this is planogram performance. Because you're gonna notice performance doesn't exist here. So what I'm gonna do instead is expand planogram and I'm gonna look for the performance table. Check it out, Syntactics performance. Click on that guy and now here are all my performance fields that relate to each of the items on each of those planograms. So in this example, like I said, you know what? I wanna bring over facings. Okay. If I just drag facings over here, boop, it's a very simple report. It's facings and UPC and name and brand by planogram. But if I bring over, let's say sales, and I drag this on here, see how it replaces it? So now it's sales instead of unit movement. It only wants us to be able to do by default one measure at a time, but that's not what I wanna do. So instead, it depends on where I drag. So I'm gonna grab facings and I'm gonna drag this right below planogram name, okay? So guys, to see as soon as I do that, I get that blinking line below planogram name. If I click on this or let go, now I'm adding facings below planogram name. If I wanna bring over sales, I'll just drag sales. And instead, I'm gonna put it to the right of facings. So again, do you guys see that blinking line to the right? If I let go, boop, now I've got facings and sales for each planogram. And then lastly, I said I wanna do unit movement. So unit movement, where are you? Where are you? There you go, right in front of my face. And if I drag this over to the right of sales, boop, now I've got unit movement for each planogram, for each item, for each brand, for each uh, name, okay? So it's a way for me to create multiple fields for each grouping. So now what I'm gonna do, and I know I'm gonna regret this as soon as I do it, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, run this report. And now I've added in a lot of data here. So it is gonna take a second to run, but I just want you to see what it's done. Because again, we're still doing this for every planogram within the database. Again, like I said, chances are, that's not really what I wanna do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and throw in a prompt so that we can only look at sample coffee makers because I don't wanna see everything. So we'll let this run and run. 
and run. And run. There we go. So now I can see for 10 bay breakfast cereals, here are items on that planogram. So this particular item has four facings on that planogram. It's giving us $2,159 uh, $2, no, $2, worth of sales. And we've sold 1,420 units off of that planogram. Okay, so you can see it's starting to pull in the exact data that we're looking at. Again, if I scroll to the bottom, it's doing it for every single planogram. So that's not particularly useful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my edit option again. Boop. And now let's throw in a prompt. Okay, now there are multiple ways that you can do this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the way that I think makes the most sense in our scenario. Because I want you now only find um, planograms in a certain node. And I want to do this based on status. Okay. So I only want live sample coffee makers planograms. Now you could apply a filter directly to this table, but what I find is that I'm going to have to load the data first and then filter it. And I don't want to do that. So by creating a prompt, I kind of limit the data first and then the filter can be like, okay, if anything has zeros, filter that data out. But what I want you to take away from this is that I'm creating a prompt, even though the data of status and hierarchy node don't exist in this table. So I can still prompt based on something that's not there. So the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna click on the pages. So Cognos is breaking everything that we do out into pages. So right now we have page one, which is the report, and we have page, another grouping of pages for our prompts. But right now, I don't have any prompts. So what I'm gonna do is select prompt page, and I'm gonna create a prompt, okay? So now, if I double click on the prompt page, here is my prompt, okay? So it's kind of easy. Now you could also add things to your prompt page, but I don't wanna do that. What I wanna do though, I guess I'll, I'll take that back a little bit, is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this toolbox, so this little hammer guy. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag over some text to this prompt page. So I'll, double, I'll just drag this guy over and I'll throw it up here to the top, because what I'm gonna say is select node, and click OK. So I'm giving it some kind of direction. What you can also do is you can also bring over um, this block here. And I'll drag this block right below the name here, just so that it gives me some kind of spacing between the text that I'm giving it and the prompt itself. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down in my toolbox and I've got this option for prompting. You have multiple types of prompts. In this particular example though, what I wanna do is I wanna do a value prompt. I want you to select a value and use that to decide what data we're prompting for. So I can just drag this guy over. I'm gonna put it below this spacer. And now it brings up the prompt wizard. So what we're gonna do is again, I'm gonna kinda of leave this as a default. So we're creating a new parameter. So I'm gonna leave it as the default name. The parameter is essentially, what am I gonna prompt? What do you wanna prompt based off of? So I'm gonna say, you know what? We'll leave it as generic, and then I'm gonna click next. Then package item, again, goes back to the data. So I'm gonna click on this guy, and we are right now trying to create a prompt based on node. So I'm gonna look at my planogram information, and I need to know where the planogram data is. Okay, so in our sample data, the way that our node is structured is that we have an all node. So at the very top, we have all. Then we have category and subcategory. Normally, I would go with all would be DB key one, 
Category would be DB key two, and then subcategory would be DB key three. I want DB key two in this example. I want my category. However, looking at all these tables, we have a key table. So ITX or IX space planning key, here are my keys. So this would be DB key one, so my all node, subcategory, category. So I'm gonna double click on two because I want to now prompt on that level in my hierarchy. You can make this filter optional, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna force you to do it. Then I'm gonna click next. And what this is doing is it's saying, okay, what values do you wanna use? I wanna use the values that are in key two. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click finish. So now I've got my little prompt option right here. But you can still edit this prompt. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna select on it. And then what I'm gonna do is on this option right here with this uh, three bars and the sliders, these are my properties. So I am selecting on my prompt and I'm selecting my properties. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, we're using key two, but you know what? I'd like to also show the values in that field of key two. So use key two, show me the values of key two. This is already required, but you know what? I'm gonna make this multi-select because maybe you wanna do coffee makers and ice cream. So it's a way for me to select multiple nodes, okay? So now I've got my prompt right here. This is my node prompt. What I can also do though, is I can also add in a status prompt. So what I'm gonna again do is take some text here and I'll just drag this right below my hierarchy prompt. And I will say select status. That is not how you spell select. Select status. And it went in the wrong place. So I'll just drag it down here. Nope. You know what, I'm missing this piece of it. So I will take this block, there we go. Drag the block there. Now why are you doing all that? Stop it. There we go. Drag my status below the block. There we go. And then below the block, I'll throw in my next prompt. So again, I'm gonna do a value prompt. We're gonna do this as parameter two, so this is prompt two. Click next. Now in this example, instead of doing status, I'm sorry, instead of doing node, I wanna do planogram status. Well, if I look at the tables again, check it out. There's an intactics planogram status table. So I can expand that. And status name really is this description field. So I'll use description, click okay. Again, this is not optional, you have to do it. And then I'll click next. Now, this is asking us, where do we wanna apply this prompt? Well, query one is the table. Query two is the first prompt. And now we're creating query three, which will be our second prompt. So I want to prompt based on query one. So I will select next. And in this example, what values do I want to use? I want to use description still. So then I'll select finish. So now I've got, formatting is bothering me. So I'll add in a block below this guy. There we go. And I'll take you and I'll put you below. Come on. Or not. Ugh, whatever. We'll leave it there for now. So now I've got my status prompt. So if I select on this guy right here, I can again say, you know what? I want you to show the values of description and we'll leave it at that. Now, there are some other options that we can do right here when it comes to formatting our cancel, back, and next. Because really, all I want you to be able to do is cancel your prompt or finish it out. So since I have this text or this block right here, I can actually drag this cancel button to that block, and I can drag finish up there as well. You know what, 
back, I don't need it, so I'm gonna delete it. And next, I don't need you either, so I'm gonna delete you. So now, we've created our prompt page. Then, what I'm gonna do in order to see this work, is I'm gonna go ahead and click on my run report again. Now, what you're gonna notice is that when I run this, if all goes according to plan, here we go, check it out. Here are my nodes, so select a node. In this example, I'm gonna do coffee makers, but I could select other, of course it doesn't want me to do it right this second. I could select other nodes, but for now we'll do coffee makers. And then here are my statuses. So I'm gonna do only live coffee makers. So if I click finish here, boop, if all goes according to plan, when this moves on, check it out. I now only see my coffee makers planograms within this report. So that prompt was an easy way to change that. Hey, Kenny, I have a question about, are you able to select, and I know we can, more than one status at a time? Yes, you can. So yeah. as long as you change the prompt to a multi-select prompt, you should be able to select multi-statuses um, as well. I didn't do that in this example, but yes, you could. Good. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Now, there's a couple more things that you could do here quickly that would allow us to format this a little bit differently. So one of the things that I notice right off the bat is that sales dollars doesn't have a dollar sign. So I'm gonna change that. What I also don't like here as well is I also don't like these headers. So because these are coming from the table column, the table data, notice that unit movement runs together. So I don't like that. So I'm gonna edit this again. Now the first thing I'm gonna change is my uh, dollar sign. So I'm gonna select this guy right here. So select my dollars columns. And notice that when I click in it, you get all this fun formatting stuff. So the one thing I'm able to do right here is I can actually do a data format. So in this example, I'm gonna format this as currency. The cool thing, and I think this is cool, and keep in mind we've been quarantined for so long that lots of stuff looks cool, is that you can also select different currencies. So in this example, I'm just gonna do the US dollar, but then I can also display the currency as the currency symbol. You can position the currency differently. So if you want it to be at the beginning or the end. In this example, I want it to be at the beginning. Now when I click OK, and I run this guy again, we'll do Coffee Makers Live. Check it out. Now I've got my dollar sign formatted in there, which is really useful. What I can also do then, the last thing I'll fix as far as formatting is concerned, is if I go back to edit this, you know what? I wanna change this header information. So if I select this header right here, over here on the right, my properties for that header are showing up. And what I'm gonna do, actually I'm going to right click on it, so actually what I'm gonna do is hide my properties. I'm gonna select this guy and do more because what I can do is I can turn on show text. So what that's gonna do is essentially in data manager, it would be my uh, plain text. Now I'm just gonna override this. So this is facings, this guy right here, you are going to be show text, sales dollars, and then finally with you guys right here, make you text, you're gonna be unit movement. Click okay. I'll run this guy one more time. Live sample coffee makers. And check it out. You can now see I've overridden the headers. All right, so before I open up for questions, what I'm gonna do is also save this report because we've done a lot of work to it, I don't wanna lose it. So what I'm able to do is I can click on the save icon right here and do a save as. And kind of goes back to structure. So what we can do in this example is I can create different folders for where I wanna save my tables. 
So remember in data manager, it's all kind of running together and whether or not you share or not share a table or a pre-filter determines whether or not everybody can see it. But you know what? Maybe I want to create folders that are specific to users. So I'm going to create in this example, a training folder and I'll just call this my webinar table. Click save. And now I've saved that table. The last thing that I can do with that table then as well is you know what? Let's export the data. So what I'm able to do is I can click on this player right here to run and you can do this as run as Excel. So if I do run as Excel, I'm going to pick coffee makers live again and click finish. And since I have Excel installed right here, if I open this table up, here we go. Here is all of my data for my sample coffee makers planograms. So easy to throw into Excel and then really easy to run any kind of formatting or queries within Excel. So hopefully that was somewhat useful. I will go ahead and open it up to you questions. Does anybody have any questions on anything that we did? So Kenny, aside from trying the uh, wildcard search for the oh, yes. uh, prompt, um, just a couple questions. One is about um, what browsers um, is open access reporting um, compatible with? Ooh, that is I a know. great question. And to be honest, I'm not 100% certain I'm using Chrome. So I know for a fact that it works in Chrome. Um, I think we actually, our preferred web browser tends to be um, Internet Explorer. Yeah. Yeah. But I, we can double check on that. It'll probably be in the install guide for it. We'll double check. But like I said, I'm using Chrome and I don't have any issues with it. Any other questions? And while we're, while we're trying to do the, the um, wildcard search, yep. um, I just figured maybe this would help everyone if everyone didn't see the question. There was just a question about, you know, what version you're on, um, you know, and that someone was on 2017, you know, and just asking about like availability of open access and what version you were on. So this version that we're using right now is 2018.1. Oh, I thought it was um, Yeah, it's 2018.1. This is, is not the newest version, but it is the, I guess, in between. But this goes back to um, 2017.1. We'll still have it. So you should still be able to do any reporting with it as long as you've got JDA reporting installed. All right, let's see here. So I'm actually going to run a different report because I didn't create one with a wild card. So let's do this. Anyway, while I'm doing that, if you guys have any other questions, throw those up. Um, no, no other ones aside from the wild card. Okay, let's try this. So let's find a... Oh, actually, I do have a, qu a couple more questions coming in just while, oh. while we're trying. Um one is um, that they may have missed it, but where is the data feeding from? Okay, or is this vendor specific, which I can answer. So this data is feeding in from, we're using, I'm using generics. So I'm using the generic unit movement and the generic sales, which is feeding in from just calculated data within space planning. Once it gets saved to the database, it's making that connection. But if you did the same thing where you were using your own description fields and value fields, those are still available they're still visible so you'd be able to report off of that information let's see here i'll just open you in space planning and kenny i don't know if you want to answer i'm going to put this one out there okay um there was a, a question about um if you can make a report with multiple tabs so it'd be more like a right more like a single planogram view i'm assuming you can um and then export those tabs into separate tabs Ooh. meaning right worksheets in excel Okay, that one I am not 100% certain on. I know you can create a tab report, so right. you'd be able to create the tabs. I don't 100% know what happens when you go to export it. So we Yeah, I have a feeling, I'm, <laughs> I'm basing it off of space planning world, but I shouldn't be, um, that we couldn't you know, automatically do that, right? Yeah, yeah. That's a great question though, Chris. Great question. <laughs> yeah, but you can absolutely create the tab report. Um, what you can also do though in, this is more advanced, and I'm not going to pretend to know how to do it is you can also create macros that work with uh, the reporting. So I'm sure somebody somewhere can create a macro that would allow you to export each tab somehow. Right. I just, I have no, I have no ability to even begin to concept how to do that though. 
And also, Kay, this is a great question, just a general question about um, Cognos, right? Mm -hmm. Since Cognos is a, um, IBM, it says, is the Cognos reporting part of open access license or is it a separate license? It is. So Cognos, so if you get open access, that's one license and then JDA reporting would be another. JDA reporting right. locks into Cognos, so you don't, you don't need to get Cognos as well. JDA reporting takes care of that. It's also apparently, from what I understand, cheaper. So if you get it through us instead of doing it through IBM, um, it's a little bit cheaper as well. Okay, great. So Kenny, did you show them how to do the um, the dollar sign? I, or did I miss that? No, I did not because I was trying to... Hey, Robin, can you find me while I'm doing that? Can you find me a uh, DB key that is long, like within your sample database, a DB key that might be more than one so I can try the prompt? Yeah, or do you want to just try something like just containing like, just try something like containing coffee? I can't, the prompt isn't built on that though. The prompt that I was looking at is built on... Okay name well actually all right hold on one second let's do this where are you focus kenny okay reports all right let's see here um trying to think so let's see planograms in store Let's just run this and see what the prompt is. I don't know what's in the sample data is the problem. All right, so let's say if I do, let's see if it lets me even do, um, should be something with five in it, I would assume. It's taking a wild guess. Oh, see, what did it just do? It's converting it somehow, so that wild card does not look like it's working in this prompt. That's a great question, though. I will keep researching that, and I will, if you want to shoot me an email, um, whoever asked that question, uh, kenneth.miller at blueyonder.com, I will research that, and I will let you know. Because in this prompt, it's not working, and I think you have to set the prompt up to do it. Yeah, I think it's just the the format. I, I think, you know, how to get to it, I, I'm sure we... I'm, I'm just yeah. say, but I'm sure we can. <laughs> yeah. And then let's do one more thing. I'll show you how to do what I did. So here's my training node right here. So here's the table I just created so I can easily edit that guy. And then what I did to change the sales dollars is if I just click in that cell right here and you click on this little icon right here for data format, if I click on that, it's prompting me with, what type of data I want to make that column. So I made this currency, but you could also do text, percent, date, time, which is really cool. And then I just picked currency for the US, currency symbol, put it at the beginning, and that's how I got the currency information. Perfect. Any um, other questions? Uh, yeah, I have a great question. It says, are you able to search in your report names or do you always have to go through the list? Ooh, that is a that's great question. Right? question. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at this. Um, right now, based on kind of the way that this one is formatted, no, I have to search for it in order to find it. And it limits the like ability to type in. So like if I try to go to my web, like the W's, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. And there is no search function within the report list. So there is no search. You can't click in it and start typing in the search text or anything like that. No, there's no search text for it. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean that that isn't a great enhancement request. Uh, it just, it doesn't exist in what I'm using right this second. Good. Any other questions on anything that we talked about? Awesome. Like I said, this is very, very high level of building, um, a report in open access. So if you guys do have any more specific questions like you guys were throwing out, uh, let me know. I'm more than happy to do the research on it and try to figure it out. Just like when it comes to tables and charts and highlights and labels, it never hurts to have somebody else help look at it because these are not always the most intuitive tools. 
And what this is doing is it is using a non JDA tool integrated with JDA. So one more kind of quick tip that I hesitate to give to you guys because I want you to come to us for the information. But since it is Cognos, if you go to IBM's website or you do any kind of Googling of how to do something in Cognos, there's a lot of great content already created, but come to us, we'll help you out. Other than that, thank you guys very much. I appreciate your time. Enjoy the rest of your week. And like I said, if you guys need anything, our contact information is right here. Um, we're always happy to answer questions. Thanks guys.